Presenting the OverEasy Machine, an overlay machine combining CSS anchor positioning and optionally, but let's also just be honest, highly likely HTML popover feature. No longer does the positioned element need to be a child of the thing it wants to attach to, and even better, JavaScript's not required for rad dynamic positioning, showing and hiding of the popover, and focus management. Woo! Let's dig in. You're watching Mini Web Machines, where we dive into small groups of code that drive rad user experiences. Let's kick this party off with an overview of Anchor. This API seriously rocks so hard. It's easy to get started with, but it's packed with features like auto flipping, like on top and bottom, depending on if it's in the viewport, auto visibility, like is the item it's trying to anchor to even visible right now or not, and handy dandy positioning keywords. So as shown here, the anchor feature is Chrome first, making this the first mini web machines that's not baseline ready. But don't worry though, we'll blink an eye and anchor is going to be cross browser. So for now, if you need to tuck this episode into your utility belt for later use, it's time to get a basic example working. It takes two to tango with the positioning aspects of the over easy machine. You need an anchor and a positioned element. For the anchor, it's a one liner. Just give the element an anchor name. For the positioned element, this is where all the magic happens. It's also where all the JavaScript work used to be. The element needs to be position, fixed, or absolute, so let's add that. Next, we need to add position anchor to set the anchor element we want to position against, you know, by default. And the first fun part, using keywords to specify where the positioned element should be placed and huzzah! Over and easy. No position relative, no calc, no noise, just responsive, adaptive positioning. Yeah, yeah. At this point, you might be like, how many keywords are there? Well, Yuna's got us covered with this great tool, anchortool.com. I like opening it up, clicking the position I want, choosing logical properties, of course, and then snagging that code right off that page and pasting it into my position area value. And so anchor positioning already so satisfying, but let's do some more with this machine. Here's a mouse centric popover interaction. We're hovering over a user in this system shows a small card of their details. The inline links in the paragraph will be the anchors and each of the cards will be positioned elements. Let's build this up from scratch. Here's our HTML with unpositioned elements ready to become positioned popovers with the over easy machine. We're going to start by giving each inline link a unique anchor name. Second, we'll give each of the user cards a position anchor that points to the contextually relevant anchor. And next, add some CSS to the author meta. We're going to add position fixed and position area block start. And ah, pause here to just admire how easy that was to attach an overlay to an inline element. What a breath of fresh air, at least in my opinion. And now it's time to add some popover functionality. All right, so we'll head to our author meta divs and we're gonna add the attribute popover. So it's basically like a one-liner to turn these into a popover, but poof, where'd they go? They disappeared. Well, it turns out popovers are like a dialogue. They're display none by default. They follow a lot of the functionality of a dialogue too. So you're gonna find a lot of crossover with the pop and lock machine. It's in the top layer. I mean, popovers are, it can aid in focus management and it's already position fixed. So we can remove that style. But for this demo, we're not using the arguably superior declarative strategy for popovers for showing and hiding them. We're going to trigger them on hover. But don't worry, the next example won't have any JavaScript and will be accessible to alternative input modes. All right, it's time for some JS. We want to show popovers when those inline links are hovered on. So we're going to select those links by grabbing all the elements that have the data hover popover attribute. We're going to stash the popover for each anchor link in that closure, and we're going to set up a mouse enter listener for each link and then show the popover. And so check this out. Popovers already have light dismiss, which is kind of a big difference from a dialogue. And so we're not going to hook that up to set it up. And voila, we've used the over easy machine with popovers to create a very app like experience with just a few lines of CSS and some JavaScript. But guess what? We can do better. Let's spice up the functionality with some more anchor position features. First up, let's remove some cruft. Position fixed, we don't need it. It's already the value for a popover. Next, and this is a gotcha that I really want to stress, a popover has an inset value by default. It's set to zero. We must overwrite this if we want our anchor flip feature to work, which is what we're going to do next. 
So to remedy this gotcha, give Anchored Popovers the style of inset auto and just thank me later for that hot tip. You know, or you can pull your hair out when you're wondering why your anchor position features aren't behaving on a popover like you expect. And you know, it's on you. Okay, on to the fun part. Let's teach the anchor element to flip to the top or bottom of its anchor, depending on which will keep it in the viewport. This is done with position try fallbacks, and we're going to set this value to flip block. In our case, we're using block start as the position area. So this line of CSS says, try and be on block end if the position of block start means I'd be off screen. So at first, nothing looks like it's changed. But what if we add a style to the body tag so that we can scroll this demo? Then we're going to see. And here it is. The overlaying element is now intelligently swi switching from the top or bottom as needed to stay in view with one line of CSS. Oh, I love it when one line of CSS has so much power. OK, but there's also there's more. There's so much more. There's another anchor feature that's just as slick and it's called position try order. And we're going to pass it the value of most height. So not only will the author card flip from top to bottom based on the viewport, it now flips based on which quadrant of its containing block has more height. It's really cool. It's so sweet. OK, but for a final touch, pop a margin block on the author meta class to add space above and below the overlaying author card. And now wasn't this over easy? It was it's popping over and it was really easy. Am I right? I don't know. I thought it was a good name. OK, so we got one more example of over easy and pop over combined to show you. And this one uses no JavaScript. It's accessible to a keyboard. You get to learn another anchor position feature. And let's add some show hide transitions to the popover. Like last time, here's my anchor and here's the element I want to position to the anchor. Start by giving the positioned element, which I've called floaty here, the popover attribute. And it disappears, but you know, we wanted that. It's now display none and position fixed. Popovers have a rad declarative API we haven't seen yet for showing and hiding them. The popover just needs an ID. We can teach our anchor button to show the popover with one line of HTML. Popover target equals demo. The ID of our popover. The default action of this is to show a target popover. And so it's way up here in the corner, but that's OK. We'll anchor it in a second. And while pop popovers have light dismissed by default, offering a close button can be nice. Two HTML attributes to do this. Describe which popover to target and then give it an action close. All right, we'll give it a test and it works rad. So now let's anchor this floaty. Make the icon button an anchor by giving it an anchor name. Then tell the floaty to default its anchor positions to the anchor icon. And never forget, popovers need inset auto if you want to anchor them. Now we can give it position area, block start. And again, this is all good. OK, let's teach it to flip. Yep, that looks great. Let's teach it about heights. So it's more dynamic, looks good. But here's a new one, position visibility. This will hide the popover if the thing it's anchored goes off screen and bring it back when it comes back into view. Hot diggity dang, right? OK, so now it's time to animate this floaty. I'll save us some time by pasting in the necessary code. But if this looks super foreign to you, watch the last episode of Mini Web Machines on the pop and lock dialog. I cover what all these magical incantations mean and do. The important bit that's different for popovers is the hook for when it's open. Notice the use of popover open. And also notice I threw in a spring easing from open props just so it looks extra floaty over top that anchor when it animates in. And that's it. We've got great keyboard support where focus order is appropriate before and after closing. We've added a backdrop and an animation. We can still light dismiss. We can still use the escape key. Ah, <sighs> Life is good. Our over easy popover machine is hooked up and ready to rock. I hope you enjoyed this mini web machine. Check the show notes for links to the code. And overall, y'all get excited for Anchor and Popover APIs. They're amazing. And one final note, the mouse hover example will eventually not need JavaScript either. Keep your eyes out for the interest target attribute, which is like popover action in that it can show hide popovers declaratively. But the interest part of the attribute describes a mouse or keyboard focus are showing interest in the element. So toggle the visibility of a target popover and watch out for popover equals hint, which will hide any other open popovers. This combo is meant for tool tips or other popover UI you want to show declaratively when a mouse or a keyboard is showing interest in an element, which is exactly what we did. But we had to add some JavaScript. And when we added that JavaScript, we kind of lost some of that gr great focus management. So 
be on the lookout for these rad new attributes. Amazing stuff. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and watch out for the next mini web machine.